So really, it's not hiding. It's just fucking hard to see. Yes. It's there. You just have to catch sight of it. And it's fast. And it's quick. There's also 14 other people and multiple other balls. 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 Bludgering around you. Yeah. Bludgering balls. Yeah. Balls. <laughs> <laughs> and another problem. Did you get Did you get where you needed? Did yeah. You? <laughs> no, I, 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 okay. I, it's, so it's just there. They just, when all the balls go up, it just takes the fuck off and yeah. it's just hard to she see. She opens the chest and they go. And yeah. it's, it's game on. Yeah. yeah. Okay. All right. No, that makes sense. I That was the one question I had. Everybody's always waiting for the snitch to show up. And I was like, well, where the fuck is it? The body of it is like shiny gold can easily like reflect and like you might get a little glint of it, but otherwise it's like iridescent. Like the wings, like you can't see, like you you know, you like you could see right through it if you if the sun didn't catch it right, kind of thing. To okay. me, that yeah. was my personal like view of it. So not only are you trying to look for that thing, but then a new problem arises: his broom's gone wonky. It, it doesn't say that he's done any more research on brooms, but does he know that they don't, like, randomly buck people off? Because he seems pretty damn sure. That was a question I had when it goes, the Nimbus didn't just decide to kick people off. And I'm like, whoa, whoa, whoa. Are there brooms that do decide to kick people off? And if so, why the fuck would anybody be buying it? I'm wondering, since they've been in school now for a while and they've been going to classes, is this stuff that they're learning in their flying class that we just don't know that they've learned? Have they had more flying classes? Well, yeah, they go every whatever day they go. You're probably right. And they probably learn more about the rooms in that class. It doesn't happen very often, but occasionally I could be. (laughs) Because I thought flying lessons implied that it was like a one or two time course you know what i mean it wasn't flying class right it was flying lessons this is your broom don't fuck up (laughs) (laughs) in my head harry never he was like oh i got a broom now bye figured it out i guess my theory on it was that it was kind of like driver's training so you did it for a little while but harry didn't need driver's training he just needed malfoy to be an ass. Was like, I'll sign his license. It's fine. It's, he might hit somebody later. It's, it's whatever. So Harry's broom is all fucking up and going crazy. It's going higher and higher and shaking him off. And we jump back to Lee Jordan really quick. He's still doing his commenting. Somebody gets hit with a bludger. And he's like, oh, that looks like a bad one. Hope it broke his nose. Only kidding. And he's still taking pop shots right in front of McGonagall. And she, like, kind of lets that one slide. The kid got hurt, and she's like, yeah. And she doesn't yell at him for that one. I she mean, lets it go. It was pretty funny. Oh, I thought it was fucking hilarious. And I thought he for sure would have gotten yelled at. But I can see her going like, yes, right next to him, but trying to hide her joy. She's a secret fan, Mick G. <laughs> she's down with a little trash talk. It's fine. Hermione is looking around the crowd and sees Snape muttering, looking at Harry. So she tells Ron that he's jinxing the broom and that she was going to take care of him. I think it's funny that Hagrid mentions, though, that dark magic is the only thing that could do that to a broom. So that the reader's mind immediately is like, Okay, it has to be something fucking sinister. It can't be a malfunction with the broom. It can't be, like, any of the teachers that we might maybe like. It has to be somebody dark and foreboding. He specifically makes that statement about the Nimbus. Yeah. So a dark wizard could take over a broom, just not that new of a broom. Well, he's saying no kid could do that to a Nimbus. Okay, I was confused about that. It explains that nobody can mess with the broom at the exact same time that somebody was messing with the broom, it seemed like. So I was like, wait, what's the rule now? They said only dark magic could. Okay. Which I thought was funny because it immediately took away a lot of your questions. It's not one of the students. Right. And it's not the broom's fault. So somebody is fucking with it for sure. A dark wizard is fucking with it. And so far, our knowledge of dark wizards is Voldemort... And there's also this really mean asshole, Snape. 
So it's up in the air wiggling and jiggling out of his hands. He almost falls while Hermione ends up sneaking up and setting Snape on fire. Can I say, that's fucking assault? You would notice. You would notice if somebody was lighting you on fire. Bippity boppity boo. Would notice. And also, she's totally carrying jars. Snape noticed these three from across the courtyard because they looked guilty. He would know if somebody were right behind him trying to light him on fire by letting fire out of a jar. Like, pretty sure. Especially someone who's carrying jars in her robe, apparently. Right. Her badass rule-breaking self, she totally knocked Quirrell on his ass. She didn't give a shit that she knocked him over, really, though. No. I do think it's funny, though, that Harry is hanging off of his broom and being bucked, and there's literally nothing being described to us that is being done except by Hermione to save him. Even once everybody in the stadium notices, the only people trying to help him are the Weasleys. They try they were like, Oh, maybe we can pull him on our room. Oh nope, that doesn't work. We'll just circle underneath him. Not one of the adults with actual fucking magic is like, let me step in. They're hoping to see some action. Somebody's gotta get hurt. Splittity splat. Everybody I, uh, wants to see blood on the <clears throat> ice. Right. Fucking A. Why the hell do you think we put the, <laughs> the first year in here in the first place? Right. People are watching Harry almost fall off of his broom. The Slytherin score like five times and nobody gives a fuck because they're all watching Harry. But you're right. Nobody really steps in to stop it. Safety procedures. Where are you at? Uh, but yeah, I thought that was fucking hilarious. All, all this is happening at the same time. Hermione went from severe issues with breaking rules to setting teachers on fire in one chapter. It does yeah. seem, though, that her efforts have paid off because in the scuffle of knocking Quirrell down and setting a little fire to Snape, things calm down and Harry's able to get back on his broom and then starts beating towards the ground and he ends up catching the snitch. Deep throated it. <laughs> Right You've in the mouth. Been waiting this whole time to say that, haven't you? Mm-hmm. He's got it written down. He's like, "Fuck mm-hmm. yeah, I get to say deep throat on the show." Harry deep throated <sighs> the snitch. One seventy to sixty, Gryffindor. Now Lee Jordan is like Gryffindor's win and and going off, and the Slytherin seeker is hollering that he didn't catch it though. He swallowed it, and it's not the same thing. I gotta admit, I'm on Harry's side. I'm glad he won his first game. It takes the edge off for sure, but he didn't catch it. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Catching it is catching it. It doesn't I, say you got it with your hand. It says that he didn't break any rules, so it's a totally fair catch, and I respect that. But I'm like, it kind of robbed Harry of his knowledge of his ability to play his post in the game. I think that one of the things missing is that we don't see his perspective right before that happens so he hops back on his broom and we don't know is he racing to the ground to get to the ground or did he see that snitch and do that on purpose slurp it up because he just comes up at the end of the dive on the ground with it in his mouth saying i got the snitch we don't know if it was an accident on his way down or if it was an intentional oh shit i don't really know how to catch this going this fast oh no it's in my throat move that's kind of what i thought i (laughs) thought oh fuck i'm choking i need to get to the ground so i don't have to balance flying on top of suffocating but did he see the snitch first and go oh shit there it is oh shit it's in my mouth Mm -hmm. (laughs) (laughs) that would be just awful i'm sure that's how like that probably is how it happened he probably saw it and went oh my god okay and then snippety snap there we are i think it's funny that it literally describes how, how Lee Jordan is and Marcus Flint are fighting about who won and Harry isn't with his teammates celebrating. He's not with the teachers getting his broom inspected after this really weird fucking shit just happened to it. He somehow sneaks away with his other friends who are not related to his Quidditch team and goes to Hagrid's fucking hut and goes and has tea. I actually had an issue with that. I wanted to call bullshit because if your new MVP of the entire school and team 
right. wins the game, you do not let that fucker out of your sight. He gets the game ball. He gets the, the Gatorade, which I don't know what Wizards used. Probably like chocolate syrup. Butterbeer. Butterbeer. Thank you very much. I forgot about butterbeer. That pumpkin was dumb. I apologize. Juice. But so they dump a bunch of pumpkin juice on them because they celebrate the game. I mean, I know they don't have the same traditions as us, but that's kind of the way I picture it. You don't just let them disappear. Hey, fucker, you just won the game. Time to celebrate because right. you just won the game. Yeah, and there's something weird that just happened. So at the very least, the teachers are going to be like, um, we need to figure out why you just almost died. Right. Oh, fuck yeah. If I was Mrs. McGonagall, I'd be like, hey, that super expensive broom that I just bought you fucked up. Yeah. So yeah. if it's busted, right, you can't have that. If it's if there's something wrong with it, we got to return it or whatever. But that's fucking dangerous. Yeah. <laughs> I about killed you by giving you a gift. I bet she'd just feel terrible if something happened to him. But even she loses sight of him, and he goes back to Hagrid's hut. Yeah, I I thought that was weird, too. And they're just like, yep, he ditches everybody and, like, leaves them to fight over the score and goes and has tea and chit-chats with Hagrid. And they're discussing all the cool moves Harry did and everything, and then all of a sudden bring up Snape's injuries. These kids do have really crazy restraint not talking about that fucking giant dog. Like like you were saying, like Neville especially. I'm really surprised that they wouldn't have been like, dude. Uh, <laughs> yeah, somebody would have talked yeah. for sure. Yeah, I was especially thinking. If I was 11 and seen some shit like that, you would better believe I would tell everybody. <laughs> there is a giant three-headed dog right over there. If you don't believe me, follow me. Right. That's the thing. If they don't believe you, let me show you. And also, we go to magic school, so why the fuck would you not? Right, exactly. We're learning about all of this stuff being real, so calm the fuck down. Well, and they're all about it, too. Like, Hagrid? Dude, it was Snape. Snape was jinxing my broom. Snape was trying to get past that dog. How do you know about Fluffy? Apparently the three-headed dog's name is Fluffy, people. Fluffy. Fluffy. I I do think it's also interesting how Hermione argues with Hagrid in this chapter. Because I don't know if that's indicative of her becoming more of a rule breaker or of him being more of a friend to them than an adult to them. I think he's kind of a mentor at this point. Because she doesn't even, it's not even a thought to her to, like, challenge him and be like, I don't care if he's a teacher, I saw him and I know what I'm talking about and basically, you're stupid. (laughs) I think that you're right and onto something there. I think it's a little bit of both. I think she's so know-it-all-y that she's got to prove her point, but also she's comfortable enough to prove her point to him. Right, because she would never do that to a teacher or, like, an authority figure. She would try and, you know, answer the question and way more be re- know it all Way more respectfully but than, yeah, than that, though. But, yeah. Exactly. And, and Hayward's big silly ass just keeps spilling more secrets. That dude cannot keep his mouth shut about anything. <laughs> I think it's hilarious that Dumbledore trusts this guy. With the most important shit. And yet, he's... I don't want to say he's untrustworthy, but he can't keep a secret. Dumbledore's gotta know. And yet, he gives this guy all these special jobs and makes sure everything is taken care of. And stuff that's, like, really important. Yeah. No, it's funny. (laughs) But I feel for him because I don't like secrets. I like sharing things. When I have news, I want to tell it. I don't... I don't like, like, if I know something, I want to tell you if we're going to do something and it's supposed to be a surprise. I have such a hard time. Like, I can't keep it in. I got to let you know. Noted. (laughs) Don't tell Chantel anything. (laughs) (laughs) No, really, don't. So Chantel's not going to be on the surprise birthday committee then. (laughs) No. Nope. Nope. Never. I did think it was funny that he talked about how he got fluffy from a greek dude in a pub 
because it made me think about this guy carrying, and I, I'm sure that this isn't how he got Fluffy. 